Your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief keeps you informed about what's happening in Annapolis, Anne Arundel County, and Maryland. Local news, local sports, local events, local opinion, and, of course, local weather. Your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief starts now. Good morning. It's Monday, January 23rd, 2023. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, presented by Annapolis Subaru and the SBCA of Anne Arundel County. Well, the television news kept warning us of a, quote, wintry mix, unquote, yesterday, and boy, that was lame. Where is the snow? Come on, George, hook a man up. Anyhow, we do have a lot of news to catch up on, so shall we? It was a terribly violent weekend in Annapolis. We know of four separate shootings in the city since Thursday. On Thursday, there was a shooting on Clay Street. Friday was a shooting in Robin Wood. Saturday was a shooting in Eastport. And just last night, a man was fatally shot in the head in the Woodside Gardens apartments. We do not know if there were any other victims in the earlier shootings, but hopefully the Annapolis Police Department will be releasing something a little bit later on today. You want to check back at ionannapolis.net for details as soon as we get them. Four roommates in Glen Burnie got into a brawl very early last Friday. Police were called to the Hollins Ferry Road apartment for an assault and learned that a verbal argument turned violent, and two roomies were hit with a baseball bat and threatened with a sword by the other two. When the suspects realized that the police were on the way, one fled, the other one remained. The one that did remain was arrested and charged. The fleeing one was identified, and police are actively looking for him. Anne Arundel County State's Attorney Ann Colt Lightus announced that Michael Gibson of Annapolis was sentenced to life in prison with all but 80 years suspended, so most likely life. This was for the murder of Leslie Saunders, which was back in March of 2020. Gibson was paid $3,200 by Thomas Smith to kill Smith's mother's boyfriend, Saunders. Smith's mother and Saunders had a physical argument that day, and she was taken to the hospital. Video cameras caught Gibson approaching Saunders, who was walking between the buildings in the Bay Ridge Gardens apartments, and shot and killed him before fleeing. Police did identify and arrest Gibson a little more than two weeks later. Thomas Smith, the one who hired Gibson, was sentenced to life with all but 25 years suspended. Some more late-breaking Sunday news. The Chesapeake Conservancy has pulled out of the controversial to build an office complex at Quiet Waters Park. Citing community resistance, they have decided to walk away from the project and leave the county to decide how to improve or use the land in question. And community resistance really kind of is an understatement because at a meeting on Friday night, we saw County Executive Pittman, who was in favor of the project, get booed off of the stage and leave the meeting prior to any Q&A sessions. Governor Moore has unveiled his first budget. It is a $63 billion one with a focus on education, transportation, public safety, and health. He has earmarked half a billion for the down payment on the blueprint for Maryland's future. That's the 10-year plan to upgrade our public schools. Former Governor Hogan has left a $5 billion surplus, and this budget whittles that down to just over $3 billion. Governor Moore said that that surplus still falls in line with the target set by the legislature. Maryland Hall is doing a thing tonight and on March 7th and on May 17th. It's the launch of their Maryland Hall Presents Conversation Series. Tonight, they're going to be discussing unlocking the transformative tools of art therapy. It gets underway at 7 p.m. in the Bowen Theater. That's down on the lower level. And tickets are at marylandhall.org and are only $15 per session, or you can get all three sessions for $30. bucks. i am really digging what Maryland Hall is starting to do and is becoming. Did you catch the canines and cross tracks on Friday? Did you check out the post at ionanapolis.net? We met with Molly, and admittedly, I am not a huge fan of Chihuahuas, but man, she won me over. She's going to make somebody one fine companion. And if you are looking for a forever friend, make sure you tune into the DNB on Fridays, and then look for photos and maybe a video or so on Friday at noon. We'll have all of the info on how to adopt our weekly guest, as well as any of the other fine animals at the SPCA of Anne Arundel County. Speaking of podcasts, I do hope that you caught the local business spotlight with Roman Hardgrave and the Maryland Curiosity Lab and Acton Academy on Saturday. This coming weekend, we're going to be hearing from Ray Crosby from Crosby Marketing Communications over in West Annapolis. And as we wrap, this kind of bothered me. 
Ward 8 Alderman Ross Arnett sent out an email recapping a recent retreat that the council attended on good governance and such like that. One of the questions asked was, what is true today of Annapolis and what do you hope will still be true in 10 years? And collectively, the council came up with this list of items. One of the best downtowns in America, a vibrant downtown that serves residents and tourists, a strong historic district that connects us with the past, preserve history, beautiful scale and fabric, a city of great history, authenticity and uniqueness, charming businesses above water, value maritime, best waterfront city in America, great staff, diverse council, opportunities, diverse range of race and age, open and friendly, cool arts scene, hip, loving neighbors, caring neighbors, and neighborhoods. Now, I think the council is honestly a bit out of touch on this. There are eight wards in the city, yet the majority of this list focuses on one of them, Ward 1. There are seven other wards that are much as part of the city as any other, and they deserve some attention and recognition for their contributions, just as downtown does. I also think that the council needs to open their eyes a little bit, because many who live outside of that precious historic district in this city don't feel it is so welcoming, open, and friendly. Just my thoughts. Okay, that's a wrap. Thank you, first and foremost, and also a quick thank you to our sponsors for the Daily News Brief. Annapolis Subaru, the SPCA of Anne Arundel County Solar Energy Services, and Alpha Engineering. So now you just need to hang tight because we have Ann Alsina here with your Monday Money Report. And as always, George Young from DC MDVA Weather here is with the only locally forecast weather report you're going to find. All that coming up in just a bit, so hang around. Hello, energy consumers. This is Rick Peters, president of Solar Energy Services. Have you been looking for ways to save money recently? Maybe you should consider solar energy for your home. Or are you waiting for the technology to get cheaper? If so, how long are you going to wait? Today's solar costs less than 20% of what it cost 10 years ago. But while solar prices have declined every year, so have the financial incentives. Bottom line, if you wait for cheaper solar, you're also waiting for lower incentives. Take my home, for example. My solar system was installed in 2010, and it's been paid off for almost five years, and I no longer have to buy any electricity for another 15 to 20 years. If I waited for cheaper solar, I'd still be paying an electric bill. At Solar Energy Services, we have thousands of satisfied customers who are sure glad they didn't wait. So what are you waiting for? Sunshine's a wasted. Call us today for a free solar design at 410-923-6090 or on the web at solarsaves.net. Sunshine, sunshine. Nothing else can make me feel so fine. When you live near Annapolis, you know how fickle the weather can be. So you need a truly local forecast that's accurate and reliable. Forecast right here in Annapolis. DCMDVA weather is not just for today, but for the rest of the week and the weekend too. Now here's George Young of DCMDVA weather with the weather outlook for today and beyond. Hey everyone, this is George with DCMDVA Weather, and this is your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Monday, January 23rd. It was a pretty blah January weather weekend for the Annapolis region, and it'll be more typical January weather ahead today through the weekend, with the exception being no really cold wintertime weather anywhere to be found. Look for some AM showers today before skies start to clear in the PM with highs in the mid or upper 40s, ahead of a fairly nice day Tuesday with sunshine and slightly breezy winds with temps in the upper 40s to maybe lower 50s in spots. From there, expect more rain Wednesday with temps 40 to 45 degrees with skies clearing again Thursday with breezy winds and 45 to 54 p.m. highs ahead of low to mid 40s Friday with sunshine all weekend and highs 45 to 52 degrees each day. Okay, that's it for today. This is George Young of DC MDVA Weather. Make it a great day out there today. Stay healthy and be safe. Don't forget to follow DC MDVA Weather on Facebook and Twitter for regular updates each day along with the website at dcmdvaweather.info and definitely be sure to download the DC MDVA Weather app on all of your devices from either the Apple or Google App Stores so you can always stay weather informed. The benefits of a good night's sleep are well documented. Sleeping well prevents weight gain, improves concentration and creativity, and boosts the immune system. So, what keeps you up at night? If you run a business, then the security of your computer network may be one of those things. Threats like ransomware and phishing are becoming increasingly sophisticated and pose a real risk to any business. Don't let these cyber threats keep you up at night. 
At Alpha, they've been helping their customers sleep better for over 30 years by monitoring in real time and hardening network defenses. And for those irritating IT issues that arise every day, Alpha's just a phone call away. Helping your business run smoothly and helping you sleep better knowing Alpha is on guard. Give Alpha a call to see if they can ease your worries and help you get the rest you deserve. Find them at alphagetsit.com. You work hard for your money. Is your money working hard for you? Managing and investing, it can be confusing. Ann Alsina, a financial planner from Covington Alsina, has been helping people make sense of it all for over 17 years. Are you ready? Now here's your Monday Money Report. This is Ann Alsina of Covington Alsina with your Monday Money Report. The market was down last week as investors are still weighing economic data and wondering what track the Federal Reserve Bank will take with future interest rate increases. Inflation metrics, while declining, remain well above the Fed's target of 2%. Higher inflation also meant the limits on retirement contributions increased for 2023. If you're under age 50, you can add $22,500 to your employer-sponsored plan. If you're 50 or older, you can save $30,000. These limits are the total employee contributions to all retirement accounts. If you work two jobs, you are subject to the same total limit. It's important not to confuse a Roth option inside your employer-sponsored plan with a Roth IRA. You have a total limit of $22,500 if you're under 50 and can contribute that to either the Roth or traditional option, regardless of income. It doesn't matter which option you contribute to when it comes to your employer's match. It's the contribution amount that matters, not how it is taxed or invested when your employer is matching. The recent legislation referred to as Secure 2.0 also allows participants to allocate the employer match as Roth or traditional. Not all plans have been amended to reflect this option, and you'll have to pay income taxes on the Roth employer contributions. This is a big change, so be sure to discuss it with your financial and tax advisors. If you're wondering how much to save, a very general guideline is aiming for 10 times your salary at age 67. Depending on how aggressive your investments are, the debt you carry, and the lifestyle you want in retirement, a very broad gauge of success would be to have retirement savings of one times your salary by age 30, four times your salary by age 45, and six times your salary by age 50. Another way to look at it is by percentage of income. Ideally, you should save 10 to 15% of your income, including your employer's match. This may change over time as your family grows, you take on a mortgage, you pay off debt, or receive a promotion. Given the power of compounding, the more you can save when you're young, the further ahead you are. And while it doesn't feel very good, Buying into the market right now is a wonderful thing. You have an opportunity to invest at a 20% discount. Remember that the focus when you are accumulating wealth is on how many shares you buy. Take advantage of the market downturn to buy as many shares as possible. Your action item this week is to check your homestead tax credit. If you own a home, you need to let the state know when it's your primary residence. Once your tax credit is approved, the rate at which your home's assessed value increases is limited. In the city of Annapolis, your assessed value can grow up to 10% a year. In Anne Arundel County, that growth is limited to 2%. Join us tonight for our Social Security webinar. And follow us on Facebook and check out our website at covingtonalcina.com for other educational events. Investment advice offered through Great Valley Advisor Group, a registered investment advisor. All performance reference is historical and has no guarantee of future results. All indices around management may not be invested into directly. The opinions voiced in the show for general information only are not to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual to determine which strategies or investments may be appropriate for you. Contact the appropriate qualified professional prior to making a decision. And if you don't have a financial advisor, come talk to us. This is Anne Alsina with Covington Alsina. Coping with advanced illness can be overwhelming, and determining the best options for a loved one isn't always so easy. But here at Hospice of the Chesapeake, your hometown hospice, we want you to know you do have a choice. You can choose exactly who provides the care and the type of care you receive. And it's your decision when and where your loved one receives that care. We have served our community, family, and friends for over 40 years. We are there when you need us. Learn how we can help at hospicechesapeake.org. You've been listening to the Ion Annapolis Daily News Brief. Tell your friends and colleagues, this is the podcast where you can keep up on the latest with what's going on in Annapolis and Anne Arundel County. And don't forget about our website, IamAnnapolis.net, where you can find even more information. And make sure you follow us on Facebook at All Annapolis and on Twitter at Ion Annapolis. 
This Daily News Brief podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 6 a.m.